Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I have this story that's coming from dreadful ass Detroit, Michigan. And this is seriously some dreadful ass shit. So what's going on is that we have an ambulance worker. Her name is Anne Marie Thomas and basically she was dispatched to the scene uh, with this baby. Her name is An Anaya Tussler and she was born premature. And so this baby was having breathing problems and the mom decided to call the ambulance. So the ambulance dispatched Anna Marie to go to this house and it should have took this woman not even two minutes to get there. The woman decides to then park the SUV around the corner and then just sit and chill for 10 minutes. And the dispatch people are telling her, you have to get over there, you have to make contact with the client. This baby's in distress. She, she then tells her response team that she's not going to the house, she's not about to sit there and do CPR for 10 minutes because you know how those type of families act. I mean, this is some bullshit. I didn't even know shit like this could happen. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. You'll see only on Local 4, as the police just illustrated on the east side, seconds can mean the difference between life and death. So when a Detroit EMT refused to help a baby when she was just minutes away, some wondered how she was able to keep her job. Local 4's Sean Lay is live tonight with more on this investigation. Sean, good evening. Good evening. Let's start with this, Kimberly, that the investigation just wrapped up and it showed that this medic was not being sent, not being sent into a hostile scene here. I'll read right from the investigative report. Detroit EMT Anne Marie Thomas refused to respond to a call for service for a baby not breathing for no reason other than not wanting to perform CPR for an extended period of time. For that, medic Thomas was suspended. She was not fired. Message to see 33 on the to make that scene, but you're going to have to make patient contact. That's the voice of a frantic Detroit Fire EMS supervisor ordering veteran medic Anne Marie Thomas to get to this house. Inside, a baby not breathing, her mother calling for help. Thomas was just around the corner on her previous run a few streets east. The eight month old baby on Glastonbury was exactly nine tenths of a mile away. A two minute drive at normal speeds, but Thomas took six minutes and then shocked dispatchers by telling them this. Thomas parked her unit on this corner, a street away from the baby. Thomas and her partner were in this SUV, outfitted to be just like an ambulance to help medics get to people faster. But in this case, Thomas refused to go to the house. Uh, Romeo 33 updated information that the child is not breathing. The baby was hooked up to an oxygen oxygen machine because it was premature. Romeo 33. Even with that information, Thomas and her partner didn't move. Romeo 33, medic 51, be advised. CPR is being performed on your scene. Romeo 31, medic 51, CPR is being performed by the baby's mother. Two internal investigations were done. The reports read that Thomas told her boss, quote, I'm not about to be on no scene 10 minutes doing CPR. You know how these families get. The ambulance eventually got the baby to the hospital. She was revived, then died the next morning. Ma'am, you have to make contact with your patient. You have to make contact with your patient. Frantic long moments there leading to that 19 minute response time. Here's a statement from Fire Commissioner Edsel Jenkins to Local 4 tonight. Quote EMT Thomas was immediately removed from duty following this incident. She has since filed an appeal as Executive Fire Commissioner. I have the ability to make the ultimate determination, which means that she's already been punished once. We'll see if she's then fired after this incident. We, of course, tried to get uh, medic Thomas's side of this story. We have not heard back from her. Also, Kimberly and Ruth, we've not heard back from this family yet what they think of this. Back to you. Wow, and especially if you're a parent. This just seems so heartless. Was the partner disciplined? The partner was not disciplined. The investigative report, two of them making it clear that she wanted to run into the house and help the mom, help the baby, but she was the junior officer uh, on this crew. Mm -hmm. Thomas was the senior officer, so she followed her lead in this one. Uh, uh, Unbelievable. Uh, shameful. All right, Sean Lay reporting Thanks, live Sean. for us tonight. Sean, thank now you. Now to a new development in a local four exclusive investigation. A Detroit EMT fired for refusing to respond to a call of a baby in distress. That baby later died. And our Sean Lay first broke this story tonight. He tracked down the EMT. Miss Thomas, I'd like to get you aside, Miss Thomas. First, Anne Marie Thomas closed her garage door on us, dodging our questions. Can I get your side of this story, please? Next. 
she almost hit our photographer as she flew down her street. Many think the now former Detroit Fire EMT should face criminal charges for this. It's Romeo 33. How long did they delay? That's the voice of a Detroit Fire EMS supervisor after learning that EMT Thomas refused to help eight-month-old Anaya Wright Tressel. She wasn't breathing, her mother calling 911 for help. Thomas and her partner were sent, but Thomas wanted to wait for another crew and refused to tend to the baby, fearing that the baby's family would be hostile. A supervisor in a report quoting Thomas, I'm not about to be on no scene 10 minutes doing CPR. You know how these families get. But EMT Thomas never went to the house, where inside it was just Inaya and her mother. She was performing CPR on her. An investigation finding that Thomas ignored four orders to get to that baby. 33, 51 is still given a 12 minute ETA. Ma'am, you have to make contact with your patient. There's nothing in the comments that state you have a hospital team. You have to make contact with your patient. Total response time when that other crew finally arrived, 19 minutes. And Naya died the next day. My daughter would have been here and she would have just came around that corner and responded for my, my crying of help. And that was our Sean Lay reporting. Right now, no criminal charges have been filed. In this All right, case. so you guys just watched that news clip, and this whole situation is just sad. It's sad that a baby was born premature. She fought for her life only to die in the hands of this evil, crazy, sadistic woman. Who the hell refuses to go to a scene and give a baby CPR? I mean, this whole situation is crazy to me, and I just feel like there has to be more to this story. She has to have known that family because I don't understand why she would say something like, you don't understand how these people get. She had to possibly have known them. You know, why would you paint this family with all one brush? Why would you think that all black people act emotional and crazy under situations like this? Why not judge the family based on their actions? It's really scary to think that if you're having some type of help and duress, that the ambulance may not get there on time on purpose. You know, so this makes me think, have there been other people in Detroit, you know, who have died because this woman didn't want to go to the scene or she wanted to wait 10, 15 minutes till other people got there? You know, this is just really, really disheartening. They're saying that she was fired and it took them a while to fire. She wasn't even fired right away. She got fired after this story leaked out. But to me, she should also have criminal charges pressed on her. It's because of her selfishness that this woman's baby is dead. I find this whole situation disgusting. So how about if her house ever catches on fire? I hope the Detroit Fire Department decides to just kind of chill for 10 minutes and not go put out the blaze at her house because you know how those people act. You know, why do you not, why do people not put themselves in other people's shoes? Would you want if this was your child, if this was your family member, if they were in duress and they were going through, if they were in distress and they were going through something, would you want an ambulance team or a fire department not attending to them because they're black or because they have some type of preconceived notion? I think this is sick. And the fact that she's black and she has this mentality says a lot. You know what I'm saying? And for her to say something like that to me is extremely racist. If it was a white paramedic person who said something like that, it would definitely be considered racist and they would have been fired instantaneously. But because it's a black woman who's saying something like that about a black family, it's almost like the, the department decided to take their time firing this woman. And I just think that is complete and utter bullshit. Not only should she be fired, she should be in jail. Mother should definitely sue because this whole situation is just disgusting. It's not going to bring back her daughter, but I would still sue because that's just the point of the matter. You know, the whole situation is not only dreadful, but it's definitely disgusting as hell. So anyways, you guys, go ahead and leave a comment. Let's get the discussion popping. Let me know what you guys think about this dreadful ass story that's once again coming from dreadful ass Detroit, Michigan. All right, deuces. Hey YouTube, it's your girl Lovely T and you can show me some love by hitting that subscribe button, watching my previous videos and following me on social media.